Warning, major spoilers for the story of Red Dead Redemption 2 are in this video. If you have not yet fully completed the main story, you should click off this video right now. Feels weird doing that again. Anyway, hello everyone. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll already know this, but if you don't, after exactly 6 months of not even touching it, I have finally returned to the masterpiece that is Red Dead Redemption 2. Exactly 1 year after playing it for the first time, and exactly 6 months after 100%ing it, on the 27th of December, the time finally came to replay it. After playing it for a few months, I've noticed a lot of things I didn't notice the first time, and I think it's very interesting to see how my experience playing Red Dead Redemption 2 has changed on my second playthrough, so I wanted to make a video about it to share my thoughts to you all. So, exactly one year after my initial Red Dead Redemption 2 review, here are my thoughts about replaying it. Oh, it feels good to be back. So if you haven't watched my video on 100%ing Red Dead Redemption 2, at the end of it I said that I would try not to play at all for the next few months, because at the time of 100%ing it, I had 550 hours played of Red Dead Redemption 2, and I thought that if I took a huge break, my experience would be much fresher when I came back. And that it did. I'm honestly so glad that I took a huge break, and I would strongly recommend anyone who's thinking of replaying Red Dead to take a big break first, at least around like 4 or 5 months, because you look forward to it so much more. And when you do get around to playing it, everything, the story, the gameplay, just the overall world, will all feel so much fresher, and you'll appreciate it and enjoy it more. I tried to avoid watching too many Red Dead videos or listening to any of the music from it, because I wanted to experience the music once more when I actually play the missions. I was nearly as excited to replay Red Dead than how excited I was when I first played it. I remember thinking about it so much in the days leading up to replaying it. I literally had dreams where I'd replay it too soon and I'd feel really down about it. And a few minutes before I was about to load in, I had this really weird feeling. It was like the past 6 months had just been a blur and it hadn't really been that long since I played Red Dead. Even though I literally didn't launch it in half a year, it felt as though I should wait a little longer before replaying it. It's funny because when I 100%ed Red Dead 2, it felt weird knowing that I wouldn't play it for another 6 months, because I had played it nearly every day since I got it. But before replaying it, it was the exact opposite, where it felt weird that I was about to play it since I hadn't played it in so long. When I finally pulled myself together and loaded in, and that eerie soundtrack started playing, with the text saying, By 1899, the age of outlaws and gunslingers was at an end, it was just an excitement like no other. And as the opening cutscene went on, I started getting flashbacks to this time on my first playthrough, when I remember getting Lenny and Charles mixed up, and got Bill and Pearson mixed up. Everything felt so familiar, but so unfamiliar at the same time. Like it felt as though I had just played this game the day before, but it also felt very unusual controlling out there. It was such a weird feeling that's really hard to describe. But when I heard Micah say, Arthur, there's a body in the wagon, and the outlaws from the West music started playing as the shootout was going on, that was the point where I felt I was right back in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2. The combination of excellent build up, fun gameplay, and exhilarating music just made me realise that I am finally back playing Red Dead, and this game is the best game ever. I really love Chapter 1, I don't know why so many people don't like it. I've heard a lot of people don't like it because they just want to get into the free realm, but I think it does a great job of introducing you to the gang, and I really love that feeling of being back at square one, ready to start a new playthrough. And the missions like the opening mission and the train robbery mission are some of the best in the game in my opinion. It goes back to my point where you sort of have to take a break if you're planning on replaying this game, because otherwise you're just jumping straight back into the gameplay that you're so used to, and you're just going to get annoyed by having to watch the first scenes. You're going to want them to be over, and that's not how you should really be starting a new playthrough. I really didn't want that to happen, and I'm glad it didn't, because instead of being frustrated at it, Chapter 1 was sort of like a welcome back from Red Dead to me, and I thought it was really exciting. I'm also appreciating even more just how beautiful the soundtrack to this game is. Each piece of music just fits so perfectly with the mission it plays on, and they make the mission so much more enjoyable, and some pieces are just seriously stunning. This time I definitely didn't want to make the mistake of waiting until chapter 4, so straight away I saved a file in chapter 1 so I can load back in and replay it whenever I want, and I've done that with the start of chapter 2 and 3 as well. I did a bit of free roaming around the Coulter camp, which I didn't do at all last time, and I noticed that people started to doubt Dutch a lot earlier than I thought. There were two interactions with Molly and Hosea where they both questioned if he really knew what he was doing. 
I thought people started to doubt Dutch after the failed Santini bank robbery in chapter 4, and I didn't really notice it on my first playthrough because it was quite subtle, but in the early chapters, Arthur talks a lot about his doubts about Dutch, and it seems like people started to doubt him much earlier, ever since Blackwater. When the gang moves down from the snowy mountains, in any other game, if you told me that I would spend 8 minutes straight just driving a wagon, that would sound boring as hell. And especially on my second playthrough, having already done it, I'd be dreading that part. But Red Dead just does it differently. It's just Arthur, Charles and Jose in the wagon talking to each other, and somehow, I don't know if it's the amazing music, but Rockstar just managed to make it feel relaxing and seamless. And it felt more like 2 minutes than 8 minutes. You know this area? A little. I've been through a couple of times. There's a livestock town not too far from here called Valentine. Cowboys, outlaws, working girls, our kind of place. Driscoll's? Probably them too. Pinkertons? Let's hope not. Chapter 2 is probably the most nostalgic to me of all the chapters I've played through so far. I remember when I was in Chapter 2 on my first playthrough, I thought this was just going to be some fun cowboy game. I was so innocent, and I had no idea about how much this game's story would affect me. I remember just free roaming around and enjoying the stranger missions and encounters you come across and being in awe of the detail in this game. Some of the best memories I had in Red Dead 2 were in my first playthrough in Chapter 2, learning how the game worked. The second time around, it brings a big smile on my face every time I hear a character say an iconic line of theirs. Like when Arthur says to John, Just do one thing or another, not be two people at once, that's all I'm saying. I remember that John gets a flashback to that quote when he's on Pronghorn Ranch in the epilogue which isn't something I noticed in my first playthrough. Look, just do one thing or another. Not be two people at once. That's all I'm saying. I've noticed that now I'm much more expressive while playing missions. Like, I feel like I'm laughing a lot more at Arthur's witty remarks. I'm here for money. Money. Since I took such a huge break, although I haven't forgotten the main plot, and I never will, I've forgotten a lot of the little things that happen in missions, a lot of the dialogue, and how some missions go and it's really satisfying to experience them again, and at those times, it sort of feels like I'm on my first playthrough again. There's also some legendary missions in Chapter 2, such as the train robbery mission that makes you feel like an absolute badass, the last mission in Chapter 2 where you have a shootout on Valentine, and of course, a quiet time, which is just impossible to not have a smile on your face throughout. I said, what did you say? Get off, buddy. Shut up, mister. Yeah, shut your mouth, mister. <laughs> Although one mission that felt dramatically different than the first playthrough was the dreaded Money Lending and Other Sins Part 3. I put off this mission for a good while, until it was the only mission I had a choice to play, and it's insane how different it feels on the second playthrough. On my first playthrough, I thought nothing of this mission, and I thought it was just another debt collecting mission, but on the second playthrough, having played through the story, it's very sad playing this mission, knowing that this is when Arthur contracts TB from Mr. Downs, which ends up with Arthur dying. Even with the highest honour you can get in Chapter 2, the mission plays out no different. Arthur is still very aggressive, and although I tried my best not to, you still are somewhat forced to beat Mr. Downs. And on your way back, it feels so ominous. The music is very cleverly made, because on the first playthrough, the music doesn't really sound that important, but on the second playthrough, it felt so grave. I even noticed Arthur rub his hand off his face where Mr. Downs coughed on him and look at it, which I completely missed out on the first time around. When you return back to camp, the atmosphere is so off-putting. No one speaks to Arthur, and if you listen carefully, you can hear a wolf's howl, which resembles Arthur's spirit animal later in the game if you choose to continue playing as Arthur as a bad man. Yeah, that mission made me feel really guilty after. Hats off to Rockstar though, how they can so smartly make a mission so that on your first playthrough it just feels like any other mission, but on your second playthrough you notice so many different things that make it feel like one of the most important missions in the game. That's seriously incredible. That mission sadly reminded me that Arthur does indeed die, and as sad as that is, it made me appreciate playing as Arthur much more, and it feels good to be back as him. John is a really good character and fun to play as, but it just feels more right to play as Arthur, especially the second time around. When you play as John in the epilogue, it just feels so empty. 
but when you play as Arthur, the world just feels more alive. I'm customising Arthur a lot, and although I definitely customised Arthur a lot on my last playthrough, now I'm doing it more to fit the story. Throughout the whole of Chapter 2, I wore Arthur's default outfit throughout it, and although I really wanted to start customising Arthur's outfit, I felt it was just more appropriate at this part in the story that he wear his default outfit. I'm enjoying wandering around the camp and seeing the random gang interactions that come up. Shoot a godforsaken animal, I don't care. Do something. Tell him, Arthur. Do what Hosea says. Screw you, Morgan. I even noticed that Pearson sings the same song in chapter two that he sings right before the last mission in chapter six, which is a nice full circle. She sails to the westward, where stormy winds blow. Goodbye, farewell, goodbye, farewell. Rummy boys, we're bound to go. She sails to the westward. Also, this hasn't happened to me in all my 550 hours on my last playthrough, but just two days into my second playthrough, this finally happened. Now I am a prisoner in the Stillwater Jail I lie. I've seen that happen to other people on YouTube, but when I heard Arthur singing while I was playing, it just felt so special, and he's actually done that two more times since that. Arthur even started singing himself when he was drunk, which I didn't even know was a thing. But that cowardly killer that shot Mr. Miller has laid old Otis in his grave, yeah! Little things like that just make me like Arthur so much more, and I'm going to enjoy my time playing as him while it lasts. Right now I'm in chapter 3, and I've got to say it's probably tied with chapter 6 as being my favourite chapter in the game. The setting of the warm Scarlet Meadows makes it the chapter that feels most like a western game in my opinion. Also, I really like the sort of western version of Romeo and Juliet with the plot of the Braithwaite and the Grey family conflict. I just really like that sense of the ancient feud going on between these two southern families, and it makes for some of the most fun missions in the game. Like the first mission, the New South, where you are introduced to the Lawmen of Rhodes. I like this mission a lot because spending time with just Dutch and Hosea doesn't happen a lot, so it feels really special when it does, and I really love the dialogue between them during the fishing trip. It reminds you just how well the three know each other. Let me roll. You boys are too old for real labor no more. You're too dumb for anything else. <laughs> You're still too quick for me, old man. I enjoy picking on children. And all worries about the future of the gang and the Pinkertons just leave your mind while doing that fishing trip. Another mission that I adored was the finders of tobacco, where you burned down the Grey's tobacco farms with Sean. This mission is so fun because it combines everything, stealth, action, chaos, and thrilling music. The sight of the Grey's tobacco farms completely up in flames was visually outstanding. I also enjoyed this mission because it's the only mission with just you and Sean, who's one of my favourite characters. And I know Sean's death was necessary to the plot, but I wish we got to spend more time with him. Come on, take your best shot, please, eh? There's still really good missions that I'm yet to do, like the Valentine bank robbery mission, the O'Driscoll mission where Arthur gets kidnapped, and the final mission where you burn down Braithwaite Manor. Pair the amazing missions with the fact that Chapter 3 has by far my favourite camp location in Clemens Point, and Chapter 3 might even top Chapter 6 for being my favourite chapter in Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> Got you there, tough guy. <laughs> Just name the place, my friend. Just name the place. On a more negative note, there have been a lot more bad things that I've noticed playing Red Dead Redemption 2 this time around compared to my first playthrough. And these aren't complaints about the game, this is all me and my mindset of playing Red Dead 2 for the second time. I noticed that around the start of chapter 2, I started to become not very invested in the story, and I didn't play it nearly as often as I did this time last year. I remembered that I was obsessed with Red Dead last time, and I would literally play it every single day. 
I was like that on my second playthrough for the first week or so, but then suddenly I would prefer to play a multiplayer game like Modern Warfare, as it's quicker paced and the progression feels more fulfilling, because since it's a multiplayer, that progression would help when I played with my friends later in the day. And since I was spending about a month and a half working on the Modern Warfare video, a lot of my time was focused on Modern Warfare. A big factor to why I wasn't playing Red Dead as often was that I prefer playing Red Dead in the evening, because it's just the perfect way to relax after a long day. But the problem with that is that I always play with my friends in the evening, so I have to choose between playing with my friends or playing Red Dead, and more often than not I choose playing with my friends. Also, every time I play this game it feels like a special occasion that I have to prepare for. It's not like Modern Warfare where I can just jump in for half an hour before online school. Another thing that I've noticed is that I'm putting off a lot of things. Even things as minuscule as exploring a new town for the first time, or buying a new weapon, or if I was out free roaming and I saw a stranger mission on my map, I'd ride past it. And this isn't because I don't like doing any of these things, but because since everything feels so much more important on the second playthrough, I want to save them for the right time. This is a really bad habit, because that right time never comes, and it's really not how you should play Red Dead. I much prefer how I played it last time, where I just dive into everything, because that led to me being more invested into the story. There's been times where I've gone a whole week without touching Red Dead, which is really bad for my experience playing this game, because Red Dead 2 is a game you have to play pretty consistently if you want to stay invested in its story. You can't play it once a week and expect to be interested in the story. I took a screenshot exactly one year after my first save file on my first playthrough, and one year ago I was 15% more through the game than I am now, which is quite a lot. I used to think that the worst thing you could do with Red Dead is to rush it, but now I think that the worst thing you could do is what I've been doing. At least when you rush through the story, it shows you're invested in it. But if I keep playing the way I've been, I'm not going to be interested in the story whatsoever. Which really frustrates me, because the story is arguably the best thing about Red Dead Redemption 2, and I'm ruining it for myself. Also, this is more of a technical problem, but since every mission feels so special, I find that I'm screen recording the vast majority of missions I play, because I feel as though each mission could be used in a video and it's starting to become really detrimental to my PC, because those 20 minute mission files add up, and in total, my Red Dead Redemption 2 screen recordings folder is, wait for it, 310 gigabytes. That's nearly triple the size of the actual game itself. It's stupid of me, because it's not like if I don't record a mission when I play it, I'll never be able to get a recording of it. I can replay any mission I want, whenever I want, and I can load into my previous save files to get screen recordings of Stranger Missions, so I'm going to have to stop with this obsessive hoarding of screen recordings that I've got going on. I'm overall just taking this game way too slow at the moment. It's crazy how much my mindset of playing this game has changed on my second playthrough, but the good news is I'm starting to get out of these bad habits, and my experience playing Red Dead is improving because of it. One of the main reasons I was looking forward to replaying Red Dead Redemption 2 was because I had so many things in mind that I wanted to do differently. The first being that I'm playing through the entire game with high honour. I was actually really surprised to see that it hasn't changed anything in the story so far. And I also found out while trying to get honour that you can't get maximum or minimum honour until chapter 6, which makes sense when you think about it. And following that logic, I'd say honour wouldn't have any impact on the dialogue until chapter 6. So I wouldn't really recommend anyone to play Arthur with high honour in the earlier chapters, because besides getting discounts and shops, it's kind of pointless. And this might just be me, but I think having low honour in the earlier chapters, and then getting higher honour in chapter 6 fits Arthur's redemption arc, as opposed to Arthur always being good. And also, being bad is just way more fun in Free Roam. I think I'm going to play with my honour somewhat in the middle, or maybe leaning slightly towards the bad side a little bit, and I'm actually looking forward to playing with Arthur with low honour. I've always chosen the good honour choices in the missions, but I might do a few bad honour choices. On top of honour, I'm also doing loads of little things differently, purely just to immerse myself. As I previously said, I wore Arthur's default gunslinger outfit in Chapter 2, and I wore his summer gunslinger outfit for about half of Chapter 3. I'm also going to increase Arthur's facial hair by plus one each chapter, to give him that older look as the game goes on. Currently I'm in chapter 3, so I have his beard on a number 3 length. I'm trying to keep the amount of money I have pretty low, which I know might sound a bit weird, but I don't think it's very appropriate for Arthur, an outlaw on the run with a gang, to have a few thousand dollars in his pocket. And, as I said in my epilogue video, I'm using Dead or Less in the missions now, and it makes the missions a bit more challenging, which I like. And it also makes those instances when I do use Dead Eye feel more cinematic. And the last and most important thing that I'm doing differently is that I'm using the horse you initially get in Chapter 1. Even though it's far from the fastest, strongest, or nicest looking horse, the reason I'm using this horse is because on my last playthrough, when I got to the part where Arthur's horse dies, and Arthur thanks him one last time, it surprisingly didn't affect me a lot. And I saw loads of people saying that when their horse died, they straight up cried, and I was wondering why I wasn't really affected by my horse's death. 
and I came to the realisation that it was because I had three different horses while playing as Arthur. One from chapter 1 to 2, another from chapter 2 to 4, and another from chapter 4 to 6. Since I changed my horse every two chapters, I didn't have enough time to find one that I really liked, so I think if I have the same horse throughout the entire story, I'll bond with it much more, and when it dies in the end, I think it will affect me more and make the chapter 6 ending more impactful. And I feel like this horse is the most like Arthur's horse, since it's the one you get given at the start of the game. So in that regard, it feels more special than any other horse in the game. <laughs> You're a good boy. <sighs> what a fantastic game. So, in conclusion, Red Dead Redemption 2 is still pretty much perfect. During my break, I noticed that no other games felt amazing. Like when I got a new game, it would feel great for the first week or two, but then I would just get bored of them. And that's simply because this game is so incredibly good, so highly polished, that most of the games just feel underwhelming. Because Red Dead has just set the bar so high, that the majority of games can't even come close to competing with it. This game is so good, that it ruins other games for me. So it's sort of a double-edged sword in that regard. I haven't played many single player games since I finished Red Dead 2, and I've been playing a lot of multiplayer games like COD, Battlefield 1 and Valorant, and it's just so relaxing playing Red Dead, and not having to be 100% focused about any players at all. And whenever I get angry at a game, I just load into Red Dead, because it's literally impossible to get angry at this game. It's like therapy just to play it and wind down after a long day of school. I said that the soundtrack was stunning, but I don't see enough people talk about the ambient soundtrack that plays when you're free roam, and it's just perfect. It makes you appreciate the world so much more, because it somewhat sort of accompanies you in your travels. I think in 5 years time, it's the ambient soundtrack that I'm going to get nostalgic over, not the mission soundtrack. Because the ambient soundtrack was the one that was with me for way longer while I was on my horseback adventures. Another thing that I don't hear get enough appreciation is the sound of nature while you're out free roam. You can hear the crickets chirping, birds calling, your horse neighing. I've already said it, but it seriously is just therapeutic. If I ever get stressed out again, I'm just going to load into Red Dead and go on a little horse ride. I know I talked about the graphics a lot in my initial Red Dead review, but I couldn't talk about replaying Red Dead Redemption 2 without mentioning how the graphics seriously are just out of this world. In my Battlefield 1 review and Modern Warfare review, I've said that the cinematic graphics are more realistic, but when it comes to how the graphics look when you're controlling your character, Red Dead 2 is still king. It's easy to have nice looking cinematics, but overall, Red Dead's graphics are beautiful all across the board, not just in the cinematics. I could pause my game at any moment and go into photo mode and I'd be able to make a beautiful photo. Every frame in this game is just gorgeous and I've taken so many screenshots of this game. In the 6 months that I wasn't playing Red Dead, it felt like there was something missing while playing games. But I'm so glad that I took those 6 months off and I'm even more glad that I'm back in this beautiful world. I'm really looking forward to playing it even more and just losing myself in the masterpiece that is Red Dead Redemption 2. See Arthur, it's okay to dance. Doesn't mean we won't stop thinking you're angry and sad. That what you think of me? <laughs> sad in a good way, like a romantic poet. Well, that's about all I can muster. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to make more of these Red Dead Redemption 2 revisited videos for chapter 4 and 5, the chapter 6 ending and the epilogue ending, so if you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for those in the future. They're not going to be nearly as long as this one because I talked a lot in this video about being back in Red Dead 2 in general, but in those I'll be more focused on the story. To any people who have replayed Red Dead Redemption 2, what are your thoughts on your second playthrough compared to your first? It feels so great to be back making Red Dead videos. I blazed for making this script in a few days because I just enjoyed it so much, and Red Dead 2 videos are by far my favourite to make. Also, thank you to everyone for the support on my last video. I spent ages making that video, and I'm so glad that so many people enjoyed it. Anyway, thank you so much again for watching, and take care of yourselves.